Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. TGIF, what do we got today? Let's check it out. We got Patriot versus Protesters. All right. Bro or Broad. Interesting. What could that be all about? And Bird Flu Mystery Solved. <laughs> Yeah, and you're here with the big sig tig. Check it out. What do we got? Danny Milagro speaks truth to CNN. This hatred and racism from uh, Democrats is real. Check it out. So there you have it. What's happening is uh, a bunch of kids are there trying to promote uh, an idea that they think is true. And then a bunch of kids that are just like, this is wrong, what you guys are doing. Uh, you've taken it too far and you have no idea what you're promoting. And what they are promoting is a terrorist organization that's running a country of unfortunate people called the Palestinians who have had problems for hundreds of years uh, with their leadership. And they've always led them down a bad road. And it turns out the current one is doing the same thing. But this time they're getting a whole bunch of sympathy from young people who are uh, dealing with uh, what we call affluence. All right, let's move along. Uh, Hamas students at UNC are so confident in their protective circle, their bubble of delusion is quickly disturbed. Let's tune in.
And there you have Travis Long uh, with a wonderful video of triumph over lunacy. So, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's happening there. Um, turns out the liberals don't care at all about the environment either. Let's tune in and check this one out. Yeah, there you see, um, just like a concert where people paid their ticket and feel like uh, it doesn't matter anymore. They're just going to leave. Well, anyway, uh, we've got a uh, orangutan, a great ape here. First time ever seen treating his wound with modern medicine. Well, medic medicinal plant. After orangutan hurt his face, scientists observed him chewing a plant known to relieve pain and applying the paste made from the leaves to the injury. So there you go. He has a gash under his eye, probably from a fight with another male. Uh, let's have a look. Rockus hit a rough patch in the summer of 2022. Researchers heard a fight between male orangutans in the treetops of a rainforest in Sumatra, Indonesia. A day later, they spotted Rockus sporting a pink wound below his right eyelid. A chunk of flesh about the size and shape of a puzzle piece was missing when Rockus, who is most likely in his 30s, belted out a long call. The researchers noticed another wound inside his mouth. Over the next several days, researchers followed Rockus at a distance and saw something so surprising they wound up reporting it in great deal, detail Sorry, in the journal Scientific Reports. According to their study published Thursday, Rockus was observed repeatedly chewing on the leaves of a particular liana plant over several days. The climbing vine is not typical food for orangutans, but it is known to humans as a pain reliever. On at least one occasion, Rockus made a paste from the chewed leaves and applied it to his face. It's the first time an animal has been seen applying medicine to a skin wound. There you have it. Was it observed or is it learned uh, just through... You know, happenstance, trial and error. Maybe he uh, licked his finger once and touched it and figured out, hey man, my spit can heal things. And when I was chewing this and I wiped it on my face, it was great. It's the first documentation of external self-medication, the application of leaves, I would argue, as a poultice, like humans do to treat wounds and pain, said Michael Huffman, an associate professor at the Wildlife Research Center at Kyoto University in Japan, who is not involved in the new study ruckus, would never show signs of becoming infected, and it closed up within a week. Well done, Rockus. Look out for these monkeys. Uh, Planet of the Apes in theaters, or what? Kingdom of the Apes. I don't know what it's called, but uh, they're getting smarter by the look of it. Perhaps they'll be making movies soon. All right. Uh, so there's been a long-standing debate about what the heck is going on with Brittany Griner. I mean, she got caught with marijuana or a vape pen in Russia, and they locked her up. A lot of people say it was just a political thing, but they do have stringent drug laws. And uh, Joe Biden goes ahead and gives them, like, the worst uh, Russian criminal that they had in uh, prison. And basically just traded it up. So a lot of people were like, okay, well, like, you know what I mean? This uh, person, individual, is um, living a certain lifestyle, let's say. And a lot of people don't believe a lot of things that she said or says about her innocence with regards to it. And anyway, she has an interview here where she kind of talks about packing her bag. Let's just go ahead and get, give a listen and, and you guys tell me what you guys think. Brittany Griner, detailing her arrest and nearly 10 month detainment in Russia in her new book, Coming Home, telling us exclusively about that fateful day. You said the whole day felt strange, how? Uh, late getting up uh, never late getting up finally got up literally running around the house and stressing like I go into straight panic mode Brittany says her wife Sherelle usually packed for her but this time she did it herself my packing at that moment was just throwing all my stuff in there and zipping it up and saying okay I'm ready at the Moscow yeah okay well <laughs> Whatever. I've never packed a bag, like, just toss it in and whatever. I'm going, like, international. 
Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not true. I don't think anyone packs like that. And if they do, then obviously uh, it's a reflection of what their mind is like and perhaps whatever. Mental health issues. I don't know. But uh, did you guys hear that voice? I mean, I've heard women with deep voices before, but nothing like that. My goodness. And some other footage here I'd like you guys to have a look at. Just have a look at this and tell me what you think. Brittany, let me see something real quick. Mind the language. Excuse me. Put it in the comments. What do you think of that? I'm not sure what to say, but uh, I'm definitely confused. I don't know what's going on here. All right, anyway. White House forced into cleanup duty after Biden calls critical ally xenophobic. What the heck does xenophobic mean? Uh, that's when you are 100% racist. So you believe that like your race is the most superior and everything else is inferior. So I uh, wonder who he was talking about. White House Press Secretary uh, Karine Jean-Pierre Jean -Pierre, was forced to clean up for President Joe Biden after he called a critical ally of the United States xenophobic during a Wednesday campaign event. While appearing at a campaign event in Washington, D.C., Biden said the countries such as China, Japan, and Russia are struggling economically because they're xenophobic. Yikes, uh, Jean-Pierre fielded multiple questions from reporters on Thursday who pressed the press secretary on the meaning and cause of the president's remarks. I'm pretty sure it's, it's clear. Like, def define it for us, please. The word xenophobic is a very uh, pejorative and negative word, particularly to use against an ally. Is that what Biden meant, a reporter asked? Look, I think he was... Look, the president was very clear. I think that Jean-Pierre began... He wasn't very clear. That is why we we're asking you, the reporter interjected. Look, here is what I'm saying. He was talking about who we are as a country, right? He was talking about the importance about being a country of immigrants, especially as you see the attacks that we have seen very recently in the last couple of years on those attacks on immigrants in particular. And so it is important for us to remember that we are a country of immigrants. Jump here again. So like, what is she even talking about? Say, like, you know, it's just like, I'm just going to keep saying words about, like, you know, what's going on, immigrants, yeah, I'm going to talk about immigrants, yeah, like, you know, like, what, what, I'm explaining that he was talking about and how he was, uh, what he was focusing on in those comments, uh, country of immigrants, it makes us stronger and it's important to be very clear about that, and the president's always going to be really clear on speaking on issues that matter to the American people, we are a country of immigrants, that matters, and we've seen these attacks and so the president is never going to shy away from that. Yeah, I mean, like, sure, they're not wrong. China and the Uyghurs, I don't know, Japan not allowing migrants in. And when they did, they desecrated sacred uh, grounds. Uh, so anyway, whatever. Uh, Biden goes ahead and just calls a bunch of people racist. Uh, good job. Texas veterinarian help cracks the mystery of bird flu in cows. Well, let's have a look at that. Uh, the first calls that Dr. Barb Peterson received in early March were from dairy owners worried about cows, pigeons, and other birds dying on their Texas farms. Then came word that barn cats, half of them on one farm, had died suddenly. Within days, the Amarillo veterinarian was hearing about sick cows with unusual symptoms, high fevers, reluctance to eat, and much less milk. Tests for typical illnesses came back negative. Peterson, who monitors more than 40,000 cattle on a dairy farm, on a dozen farms, in the Texas Panhandle, collected samples from cats and cows, sent them to Dr. Drew Magstat, a friend from college who now works at the Veterinarian Diagnostic Laboratory at Iowa State University. The samples were tested positive for bird flu virus never before seen in cattle. It was the first proof that the bird flu, known as type A H5N1, could infect cows. As of Wednesday, 36 U.S. herds had confirmed infections according to the U.S. Agricultural Department. It was just a surprise, recalled Peterson. It was just a little bit of a disbelief. At the same time, on almost every farm with sick animals, Peterson said she saw sick people too. 
We were actively checking on humans, Peterson said. I had people who never missed work miss work. Uh, so far, two people in the U.S. have been current confirmed to be infected with H5N1, most recently a Texas dairy worker linked to the cattle outbreak. According to the U.S. Center for Disease and Control and Prevention, about two dozen people have been tested and about 100 people have been monitored since the virus appeared in cows, Dr. Dimitri Daskalakas, a CDC respiratory disease official, told reporters Wednesday. Daskalakas said CDC has seen no unusual flu trends in the area of infected cows, but some experts wonder if anecdotal reports of sick cow, sorry, six workers mean more than one person caught the virus from the animals. Peterson said some workers had symptoms consistent with flu, fever, and body aches, stuffy nose, and congestion. Some had conjunctivitis, pink eye, the eye inflammation detected in the Texas dairy worker diagnosed with bird flu. Gregory Gray, a doctor of infectious disease and epidemiologist at the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, has been taking samples from livestock and people on two Texas farms, on farms with confirmed cattle infections. There have also been reports of mild illnesses among the workers, he said. His research has been difficult. Many workers are reluctant to be tested. That may be because they have limited access to health care or fear divulging private health information. Or, uh, you know, they're just like, get out of here, we're fine. Without confirmation, no one knows if the sick workers were infected with the bird flu virus or something unrelated, Gray said. So, <clears throat> this thing could be all over, and they don't really know, but there's two confirmed. They seem to be linked in time and space, so no one would say it's biologically plausible. I mean, causal? Maybe not. Who knows? Some farm workers who were exposed to infected animals or people were offered the medication. CDC spokesman Jason McDonald said state health officials are responsible for evaluating and providing treatment according to federal guidelines. Health officials in Texas provided Tamiflu to the person known to be infected with H5N1 and family members, plus two people on a second dairy farm who were exposed to infected animals, said Chris Van Dusen, a spokesman for the Texas Department of State Health Services. He said he wasn't sure if the others had been offered the antiviral. Farmers have been hesitant to allow health officials onto their land, said Dr. Kay Russo, a Colorado veterinarian who consulted about the outbreak with Peterson. This particular disease is looked at as a scarlet letter. It has the stigma associated with it right now. Russell called for water testing of cattle, people, and milk. So, yeah, like if the people are just like, yeah, get out of here, we're not going to let you test us. Does the CDC have any power at all? Like, shouldn't they be able to verify, like, that there is a potential outbreak just about to explode here? <laughs> we do not know... What we do not measure. Unfortunately, the horse left the barn and took off a lot faster than we were able to mobilize. What? Uh, yeah, so weird reference and analogy there. Gray workers, gray worries that the recent federal order requiring testing of all lactating cows moving between states could hinder cooperation even further. All labs that conduct tests must report positive results to the agriculture department. But many farmers may simply decide against testing, hoping the outlast the outbreak, he said. The reluctance of workers and farmers to allow testing is greatly hampering understanding of how the virus spreads, how large the outbreak is now, and how quickly it may grow. It's a negative, very negative effect. Yeah, so here we are talking about, like, you know, it's going to cows, and there's only been two cases. That's it, confirmed. But this literally is telling you that there could be hundreds. I'm not saying it's, like, terrible, but uh, it doesn't sound good at all. So what is the mystery? The mystery is that... We have no idea how much this is spreading around. You immediately think about the cows, the people that care for them, and the families that have these farms. She said, you're thinking about the big picture long term. Your mind starts to go down the entire path of concern. So look out. Yeah, there you have it. Uh, very interesting episode here today. Watch out for that bird flu and all those farmers are hanging around with the dairy farmers because uh, they could be carrying H5N1. And TGIF people, thank God it's Friday, and God bless all your souls, and let's hope you have a beautiful weekend. Sigma Tiger, signing out.